Uh, hello everyone. This is going to be the basic offlane Senken guide. Senken is a universal hero, so for every point in stats, it gets 0.7 damage. Hi everyone. So apparently, like, Dota got patched last night, and I did this uh, Senken video like a few days ago, and I'm just here to like make sure the the stuff is correct, right? Because there are changes with Senken. So basically, I think Dust Devil might be a pickable for set now. Um, they did some changes to Caustic Finale. I don't think that's important. Um, Axe Scepter is removed from Sandstorm. So that's pretty big. You can't actually just stun people anymore. It got moved to Epicenter and I'm not sure how strong it is. Uh, but I'll be trying out later, like, or two, like sometime this week. Singer now procs Magic Stick, but overall I think it's still a really good spell. I'm not really sure what's the difference between the bonus attack damage and physical damage. So I would have to try it out before I know. Uh, and for talents, I still think you go for the same ones, which is um, for level 10, go for the bow strike. Level 15. The thing about level 15 is Stinger damage got replaced with bow strike cast range. And I think 20 plus 25 uh, sense some damage might be worth it now. So yeah, I'll try to like Maybe I'll try to do an updated guide if I can, in the near future. But I think whatever I've said in the current thinking guide still holds um, step some of the mini changes that I mentioned. Right, thank you. For facet, I think Sandstroud is almost always better. You get increased radius and thinking invisibility while you need. Invisibility is always good. Enemy supports have to buy sentries and dust, right? So you're going to waste their resources. For the facet dust devil, it used to be really good, but they kind of over nerfed it. So I think like right now it's 7.36C. If they're not going to buff it up, I think Sandstroud is just always going to be better. For the innate, it's going to be caustic finale. So this spell allows you to push out the lanes, right? When a creep dies, if you get the last hit, but I don't think it will explode if the enemy denies it. And then Bow Strike, Sandstorm, um, Singer. It's only 5 seconds at level 4, so it's like a pretty valuable spell to get up to level 4. You normally want to hit um, creeps with this and a hero, so that they just like you just do a lot of damage with your Caustic Finale as well, if you happen to kill the creep. And next we have Epicenter, which is you know the ultimate. Um, they kind of changed the spell a little, so it used to do uh, more damage in a shorter duration, and now it deals um, damage more constantly through a longer duration of 6 seconds, which I think is better. For his axe, it's going to be Sandstorm, you get um, every 4, 0 0.4 seconds, you get 3 barrel strike spins, and Shadow be Epicenter, like pulsing randomly every 3.5 seconds. For talents, level 10, I would say Bower Strike Stun is always good because it goes well with your axe in the late game as well. You can get the plus 10 sense of damage, but it's honestly not that good unless you think you really need the damage. Um, for level 15, I would say 50 stinger damage is always good. For your level 20 talent, I would say the left one is more fun. And the right one, you get a minus 2 second bow strike, which is which is good if you need it, right? If you're going to get the plus 10 epicenter pauses on level 25, I would say the, the left talent is better for level 20. And then for level 25, 35% sandstorm slow and blind is a great talent. I would say it's like really, really underrated. I mean, it got nerfed a little, right? It used to be 50%, now it's 35%, but it's still a good talent, especially in the later stage of the games where your BKB lasts for like 5 seconds only. And plus 10 epicenter pulse is just, uh, it's kind of like a good talent overall for more damage. I mean, for stats wise, it's kind of like a slow hero. He only has a 290 MS, but he has 4 armor and decent like HP and uh, attack damage. So it's kind of like a average uh, hero with stats. So uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about island builds. So for starting builds, there's going to be two builds. This is a uh, 7.36C. So the pretty much the offlane island builds are going to be pretty similar. So this will be the first uh, island build that I'll get to start the lane with. Normally you want to get your support to pass through a tango. So the reason why you want to start with this item build is yes. so that you actually get the maximum like damage and stats as well for a universal hero, right? Calling Blade got nerfed. It used to give way too much and now it only gives like plus 8, which I don't think is really worth it. You actually get like a really value um, with this uh, circular gauntlet and tree wood branch. Uh, but I'll definitely go and do the math and put the comparison like properly, right? So to give everyone a clear idea on the differences. Anyway, so you want to get like Bracer and you want to get the Tango, right? You want to send it over. And for your second circlet, you could actually consider getting a Nautilus sometimes if you think you need extra mana regen. If not, 
you could actually just like keep the circlet or you could go like double bracer if you want um raindrop is always like one of the items i would recommend to get and i'll move on to the second item build now that you could start with it's gonna be similar to the venture one which is if you're playing against spammy heroes magic stick true branch tangle and circlet is good the circlet you could make the bracer right and then magic one you know raindrop for your mana regen uh, for boots I would almost always recommend getting face boots now, just because of how good Stinger is with extra damage. You know, having extra MS helps a lot too. Sanking is kind of like a slow hero, and armor is always good for your offlane hero, right? Increases sankiness. Okay, so for the follow up items for Sanking, there are, there's gonna be like two meta builds and one off meta build. So the first meta build, which uh, everyone should know, is gonna be a blink dagger. You pretty much try to rush for a blink dagger. The reason why you get blink on Sanking is because. And all, all of Sanking spell is like good with bling, right? Dagger, Barrel Strike, um, Epicenter into Barrel Strike, right? That is great too. So, the reason why you get bling or rush bling on Sanking is when your team lacks initiators and you're like the only hero, right? With a blink stun. So, that would actually allow you to get a lot of kills on the map. You know, you're playing a Sanking, you're your supports are gonna be Hoodwing and Jack Hero. That is when I could say like, you know, if your mid hero is like SF, your carry is a draw or throw a lot, that's when you wanna go dagger. That will allow you to actually make plays and secure kills on the map. Especially since um, your mid and carry hero are gonna be farm heavy, right? You want to actually uh, be moving around. Get one core item, which is your dagger, and start moving around the map. But definitely don't forsake your normal items when you're going for this build. You know, the bracer, and all talisman or whatever, and uh, one mana regen. You could you could skip uh, face boots sometimes if you're going to rush dagger. Because I think face boots is an item that you would normally want to get if you're doing uh, really well in the lane. If you're not doing as well, it's okay to skip it and just go for a blink dagger. But I, I didn't add in the dagger use part though. Dagger into use is actually pretty situational and good sometimes. And I did not add that in. Yo, Jamaican Jazz, could you just add that in right now? What I'm saying right now? Ah, uh, no. The second build, th this is a build where you almost always want to get uh, face boots. And then you would get a view of Discord into a Bloodstone. Or you could actually just uh, skip your view, go a Bloodstone straight. And then, you know, get your view, Shivas, or whatever you need um, in the game. Trout is also good for this build. And the, the aim of this build is just to be a tanky dude, Your right? You power strike, you go in, you press sandstorm, you can never die. Level 4 sandstorm, 100 damage per second. You fulfill, that's gonna be incre it's gonna increase, you're gonna increase the damage by another 10%, and you know, bloodstone is gonna always keep you alive if you press it. So you always get bloodstone, like almost always in Sand King. Even if you're gonna go dagger, you kinda wanna go like maybe bloodstone later in the game. It's that it increases like pretty much everything of the hero. It just makes like the hero stronger, right? 75 AoE bonus for sandstorm, epicenter, and if you're dying, you know, press sandstorm, bloodstone, epicenter, right? If there's like two or three heroes in it, you're gonna be full HP. So the third build I will talk about, which is kind of like, it's not really a build I would recommend, right? I wouldn't recommend you getting that build. That'd be a build where you'll probably get something like Urn if you actually need the Urn. If you're playing against a Morphling, Chantress, Necrolite, you're the only person that could get Urn, then I would recommend you getting the Spirit Vessel. And after that, you could actually get the Dagger, or you could actually just go like teamfight items. Like, you know, Crimson Guard, Pipe, etc. The reason why I don't like this build, or I wouldn't recommend it, because you would have to have good matchup understanding of what hero you're up against and what hero you're playing with. So if you actually want to just get the aura items, I would just recommend playing like Darkseer, Tidehunter, Underlord, which are the three best like aura items uh, here in the game now. Uh, for late game build, you would honestly almost always want a Bloodstone. Dagger is always good. And then you know the Shroud, the Shivas is good. One of the best items in the game would be just to get a Wind Waker. Because if the enemy doesn't have a uh, notifier, or even if the enemy has notifier, your team has like three wind wakers. It's, right. it's just such a pain he has to play against. And the other item would be uh, a Ganim Scepter. So a Ganim Scepter got nerfed quite a little bit. It used to be a really like prioritized item. And you want to get it when you're close to like level 20 to 25. It's really strong with the 35% sense of slow and blind. And the reason why I like to get it late is because normally in the latest stage of the game, their BKB is only going to be 5 seconds duration and X is just going to be uh, really good. Actually another item that's really good is BKB. If you think that you would never die if you get BKB, right? Because you get a power strike, do this, right? BKB, epicenter, and that is pretty much 
like you know, a pain in the ass to play against. So now I'm gonna move on to laning. So for thanking laning, I wouldn't recommend uh, going stun. The, the thing about stun is um, you learn it if you want to get a kill on someone because it's, it's gonna cost you like 110 mana and it's truly only worth it if you're gonna have a level 1 team fight where stun is actually pretty valuable, right? Or if you're gonna go for the first blood. Because uh, normally I would always recommend getting at the singer. It's just such a good spell for last hitting. Like creepy is dying, bam, singer. Right, like you're gonna do damage to like everyone in the area as well. And always try to hit the enemy hero with Stinger 2 and a Crypt if you can. I would only recommend learning Sandstorm if your team is doing some shenanigans, right? They're trying to like trial in first blood somewhere and you're left alone in the lane. That's when I would say like it's good to just Sandstorm and kind of soak up XP, right? Because uh, it, it's still a pain for the enemy to actually um, walk into your Sandstorm. Another thing you can do is to check the enemy supports and their carry for sentries. If it's a hard lane to lane against, just, just Sandstorm. <laughs> Yeah, because if you have no sentries, it's like free lane for you. You can just last it in the sandstorm with your like 68 level 1 starting damage. So anyway, I, I want to emphasize more on talking about Stinger. So this is like the reason why Sanking is such a strong hero now. It deals like really a lot of damage at level 1. Look at this. I mean, it's like level 3, right? But the spell is level 1. You pretty much do like 100 damage um, and you get to like hit the enemy like 2-3 times, right? Because of the slow. So do your best to understand this spell, right? Uh, 30 mana. Compared to 110 on Bow Strike, really valuable spell, spammable. If you hit a creep that's dying, like normally you're gonna use Stinger on a dying creep, right? And on the enemy, they're gonna take even more damage because the uh, Caustic Finale is gonna make the creep explode. And then for spell builds, the, it's, it's gonna be kind of simple. There's gonna be two uh, basic spell builds. Okay, the first spell build would be to max Stinger, right? Yeah, like level 7. You kind of want to have like pretty much a uh, max Stinger, right? And. Level 1 bar strike always. Sandstorm, it depends. Sometimes you might just uh, have to learn Sandstorm. Shit happens, and you learn level 1 Sandstorm, you survive, you TP away. If not, you could just get like level 2 bar strike. I would always recommend to form a habit of hoarding your spell points. Right? Always have one spell point for either Sandstorm or Epicenter. For Epicenter, I would always recommend learn it when you're about to use it. Try to make it a habit. Bar strike, or you got Epicenter, learn it. And if you're not going to use your epicenter, it might just be better to like learn your sandstorm or even like a high level boss strike. Um, your caustic finale actually scales with your ult, so maybe it's just worth learning epicenter nowadays. Alright, so the second spell build would just be like kind of like min maxing or sandstorm. Stinger on level 1 is still really good, right? You still want to go stinger 3. And then level 2, you could actually just go sandstorm if you want to just play the push and pull game. Pushing out the lane, and then you tell support to pull the next wave, and you keep doing it while they're stacking your ancients or neutral creeps. That is a very important thing. And then you just go like higher level sandstorm, one level barrel at level 4, in case there's a Q opportunities. I can guarantee you, you will get flame if you have no level 1 barrel strike, <laughs> even when you're not using it sometimes. And then you go level 3 sandstorm, epicenter if you need. If not, you could actually just get a level 2 on Singer and max the Sandstorm. This would actually allow you to farm faster, I think, for Ancients without taking too much damage. You could honestly do the same with a uh, 114-204 Stinger build. You can still farm the Ancients, but you have to like, you know, Stinger and preferably having a level 1 Sandstorm so that you could actually like not take too much damage. Ancients actually do a lot of damage. And so this build is good when you just want to focus more on farming while rushing your, you know, Veil of Discord and Bloodstone. I don't think a lot of people, like heroes in the game could actually just tank a sandstorm and hit you down, especially when you're Stinger and Barrel Strike. But I gotta say, the Barrel Strike and like higher level of Stinger is more of the meta build. Give that a try first. This is more of like the... I'll say it's a good build, but you have to know what you're doing more. So okay, for the aim of the hero, right? If you're playing the Dagger build, where you're rushing Dagger, Blink dagger. you're normally gonna get your Dagger around uh, 10 to 30 minutes, and don't show it to your enemy when you're getting your Dagger, right? So once you get your dagger, you kind of want to like TP in the fog, tell support to have a uh, smoke ready, right? If there's an opportunity to kill mid, I mean, you could you could kill mid, right? Enemy mid doesn't know you have a dagger, so instant kill, bam, bam, dead. If you don't have an opportunity to do that, then, you know, smoke. So one thing you want to take note of here is you want to know the amount of damage needed to kill the enemy hero. If you have a Sanking and Vano, and you're trying to kill, let's say, a Lifestealer, you're not gonna kill the lifestealer. He's gonna price his rage and that's it. He's gonna infest. But if you're gonna go for like, uh, let me see, like a true warlord, uh, Mars or whatever, you know, any heroes that 
Oh, like no. SF, then yeah, these two heroes is enough. So a good tip is to know the amount of damage you need to actually kill a oh, certain hero in the game. Right. For the directional, like direction of the smoke, I would say if you're radiant, you know, always good to like smoke towards the ancient side. Another smoke you could do is like towards the yeah, safe lane for the carry, but ancient side, you know, normally the carry is there. Same for the die. It's just um, opposites, right? If you are actually going the Bloodstone build, then your aim is just to be a pain in the ass, right? Focus on farming. Always important to show if your lane's in, by the way. Even even when you're playing the Sanking, um, like if you're going dagger build, you want to show if your lane's in, and then you want to get your dagger height, and then TP, right? The, the reason oh, being, shoving your lane's in, enemy has to react to the creep wave. If you don't show if your lane's in, it's very, very obvious what you're doing. Uh, when you show on the map for like a second, when you're shoving the lane in, it gives uh, enemy a false sense of security as well. But anyway, back to this uh, Bloodstone build. Yeah, your aim is actually just to be a pain in the ass. You, you want to try to absorb damage as much as you can. right? If enemy cast spell on you, you use Bloodstone to heal back. Enemy spells are on cooldown. You're winning the fight for your team. Your SF is taking one less spell from the enemy team. If enemy use all their spells on you, you don't die. You're winning the game alone for your team. right? So that's um, really like the aim of uh, going to Bloodstone Veil, Shroud or whatever. One thing you, I would say is uh, don't think you're too tanky because a lot of times I've thought that I was too tanky, I went in and I died like a piece of shit. I'm gonna move on to like tips and tricks. Uh, when you stand storm, always try to stand the age, right? It makes it really hard for the enemy to like smoke you. If they want to like dust you, they have to come in. Second tip would be for yeah. Bower Strike. It's, Bower Strike actually has like a slightly longer range. It doesn't look like it's gonna hit, right? But it will hit, right? So it it can actually clip the enemy. So yeah, see level 1 Barrel Strike. It's actually pretty far by the way, look. Like, you think it's not gonna hit? It's gonna hit. Another thing to take note would be, always use a Barrel Strike into Sandstorm before you epicenter, so that the enemy is actually taking like, Sandstorm damage. And they would have to dust or half a century to stop your epicenter. Right? And use your Stinger, right? I'm pretty sure a lot of people will forget to use Stinger, especially if you're like long time sinking players. Another thing to take note of would be to know when to actually dagger into a sun or like epicenter and when to actually epicenter to dagger the sun. If using dagger and stun and you get to save your teammates, right, try to do that first. If you actually need epicenter first into a bow strike to kill the enemy, right, don't forget the sandstorm, um, then do that. So one thing about epicenter is you could always like threaten the enemy, right? You could you can always just like cancel animation on the spell. So don't feel feel free to like just cancel it if you don't need it. But uh, don't be afraid to use it. It's fine to use the epicenter and hit like nothing. It's better to like over damage a hero to kill it than to just like miss a kill. And for blink dagger, what I always do is uh, I shift blink. You know, if you don't shift blink, you're just gonna like. The the thing about shifting blink is you can shift blink, uh, click, right. It's, uh, to me, it's like way easier, because uh, after casting Epicenter, it auto-blinks, right? So what you do is, you press Epicenter, you hold your shift, and then you click your blink. That way it's gonna blink straight away, uh, when you use, like when, when Epicenter is done channeling. You could even chain your Bower Strike if you want. So it's like, Epi, shift, click, blink, Bower Strike, right? It comes out naturally. So this gives you like, you, you make sure you're jumping with epicenter because sometimes if you don't have like some stop channeling um, option enabled, you're gonna epi, you're gonna jump in, you'll be like, oh, where's my epicenter, All right? And then you get a few dumb. Epi, shift, bling, power strike. All right, sand stop. So that's all like done with shift. So I, th I think this is more like a advanced tips that sometimes you could actually just like epicenter Right, go in, sandstorm, and don't stun, right? Wait like a second before you stun. Um, let's say you're playing against a co-op, and you know he's gonna blink away, right? So wait a second, like just wait a little bit, because uh, people take time to react. So, so once you see like the blink animation, you stun. This will allow you to get like a little bit of damage in and even secure kills uh, sometimes. So this is like advanced as well, right? Like slightly advanced. When you're smoked, you get your dagger, right? Oh, you're smoke, right? You're at the low ground. You have no you could use a scan. 
If there's someone, blink stun, go. Right, straight away. Your teammates should be ready. Oh, uh, always try to wait for your teammates to be ready as well. You don't want to like go in stun and like no one's following up. Uh, the other trick would be when you smoke, you're going to high ground. Buy your own ward. You know, tell your support to pass you a ward or tell them to ward as well. Bam, go. You see someone? Bam, you jump. If you know the enemy is here, right, you could always predict the stun as well. One thing that uh, I would say Mind Control does, like, did really well when he was playing well is that he would assume the enemy is here because you don't really need to see the enemy. <laughs> you always, it's always good to see them before you jump them. But sometimes you could just, like, trust your guts, trust your instincts, go into the fog, you think they're here, go. Right. Um, and I think that's it. But yeah, anyway, um, thanks for watching the Sanking Offlane Guide. Do let me know in the comments on what... I could improve on and I, I have read like the past comments on the bench guide so for the next video I'm gonna spend more time uh, actually implementing more short videos in between as examples but yeah thanks for watching